Hey everyone, my name is Juliana and this is Juliana Talks Films, the channel where I explore and examine films and filmmakers. If you love films and filmmaking, consider subscribing for weekly videos. In this episode, we'll be hearing from contemporary French auteur Celine Sayama. Celine has received recognition for her true-to-life films portraying female protagonists as they strive to find their place in society. She became infatuated with cinema as an adolescent and often injects her experiences of loneliness, femininity, and desire into her films. Her slice-of-life style is immensely engaging as she's able able to portray her characters in an intimate yet relatable way. Celine's most recent film, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, has gained critical acclaim and landed multiple award nominations from around the globe. If I had to describe the movie in one word, I'd say it's exquisite. Some of her other films include Water Lilies, Tomboy, Girlhood, and My Life as a Zucchini. For a more in-depth look at her filmography, check the description below for details. Beyond her acute creative intuitiveness, she's also a very humorous artist, which you'll see in some of her interviews. So fellow filmmakers, here are Celine Siyama's top five lessons on filmmaking. Lesson one, film is an experience. The first time actually I, I, I felt really like, okay, this is gonna be, this is gonna be my life, was when I saw uh, Blue by Kislovsky. It was really big at the time, and he had made this trilogy called Blue, White, and, and Red. Um, and also the protocol of that, of expecting a film uh, from a director, that was the first time. Um, I was very, um, yeah, that was the first kind of shock. Um, and I think that was the first time that I actually went to the cinema by myself. So it's pretty linked, but you know, it's it's like that. It's not only about the films, it's about also the experience of going to the film. It's about me taking my bike, it's raining, the cinema is, uh, it's in my town, but it's like eight kilometers away. And you go into the theater by yourself and you pretty much, it, it felt like the first time I could actually make a decision for myself, you know, in a way. And I got out and it was raining and I went and I had this, blue uh, raincoat and I remember like the, the, this contagion between the film and life also because it's also that you know it's not only about finding shelter uh, or refuge in, in the theater room it's how then it definitely it's contagious to your own life um, so that was an important moment and also the first time that I went into an art house theater in Paris because I live 30 kilometers from Paris which seems like close it's really not the same. I went to Paris like two times a year to go to the museum, you know? And the first time that I went in by myself to this, you know, in the Latin Quarter, in those kind of theaters that made me dream, um, and I went to see uh, David Lynch's uh, Twin Peaks, Fire Walk With Me. I hadn't seen the series, so, you know, it was... <laughs> but that was, I think it was a good, a good starting point because I... I, I didn't get much of it because I didn't know a father raped her. Uh, sorry for the spoiler. And, uh, and I was, but I got out of the room and the atmosphere had, had changed. And this is something like, that I like to talk about because it's also, it's not only about, yeah, this mental place. It's about how it's, it's, it's also an art de vivre. Uh, I don't know if you say that in, in English. Who uh, speaks French? An art de vivre. No. A way, way of, of life. life. Yeah. yeah. Lesson two: Leave your film open for interpretation. I mean, this is the film that has had. I think this is my film that is the most loved. That's why. You, that's why I'm making jokes about the fact that I don't have to love it that much. You know, it's it's, it's just it's living his it's life, and um, it's like you no, know, it's like a hit. You know, I think Madonna don't, and is not going to say like like a virgin is my favorite song. She will have like this B side thing. You know, trying to. <laughs> I'm no Madonna, of course, but. Uh, <clears throat> Um, yeah, the, the thing that was super overwhelming with this film is that uh, different generation and even like women, uh, you know, in their 80s would come and say, this is my childhood. And that's that kind of intemporal feeling we were looking for. I wasn't, and it's the case with all the coming of each films that I made. I'm not trying to go with the, con the, the documentary side of what's youth today, because, you know, when you're portraying youth, it's always a little bit about contemporary, about today, about documenting, because also you're working with non-actors, so they're gonna give you, 
this very present feeling. But it's also always kind of mythological. And especially, uh, especially with Tomboy, I really wanted to make it timeless. Um, Water Lilies also, even like the costume design, which I, I do the costume design on my film. I mean, I do the shopping. <laughs> um, they're, you know, you, you, they're not branded in, you don't know when it's happening. And with Tomboy, I really wanted that timeless feeling so that everybody could connect. And so women who had their childhood in the 50s or in the 40s, they would tell me, I connect to this because I, had the right, I didn't have the right to put on pants. And then also there will be, um, and people who are more gender fluid today, they will connect to this in yeah. a different way. Um, and I always try to make films where there's room for you. Um, and that's getting more and more uh, a process for me. Like Portrait of a Lady on Fire is really designed like thinking about the fact that there should be room for your own love stories. And Tomboy was designed so that there should be room for your own childhood. And even regarding, th this is also my film, maybe that's why it's my biggest success, uh, even regarding box office, uh, because the, 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 the male audience really connected also to the film because, well, it's kind of a male character also. And they would tell me about the performance of being a, a, a boy. So that was really like the thing that I think created, the film that created such a, a strong community. Yeah. Mm. Lesson three, be precise. Well, first it has, it's a screenwriting job first, which is seem weird because like, how do you write desire? Um, it was about devoting sequence, you know, taking it step by step and being really accurate also and honest with myself. Like, when are we gonna feel like, like she desires and then it's mutual and then when are they going to get surprised by the fact that oh i feel desire so i was it's about being a pretty honest you know also not saying yeah we will you know they'll be desired like no okay the first time the painter actually feels desire is when they're going to pose she's going to pose for her and she says look at me and she looks at her and she's like boom okay now so once you're pretty accurate about this then with the actress, you're like, okay, so now how are we gonna do this? Are we? And it's just, you know, being more and more, um, yeah, accurate and radical. And it's about the rhythm of the film, each, like how each scene is a process through <coughs> desire and love being explored and, you know, felt. And it's also a process within the scene of finding this perfect rhythm. Um, and I'm super accurate, I mean, like, for instance, it's about the steps, you know, I would say to Noemi, you have to, it's a six step to her. It's not eight, it's not seven, it's six. And all of my answers and my direction, I don't like this, my, the, the words I say to the actresses, I will lot about this. This is how we're gonna create melody and the rhythm. So it's gonna be, I would do like, okay, you're going through her and it's gonna be like, And then I want you also to breathe in a certain rhythm. Like if you end the scene with an expiration or an inspiration, it's really not the same. For instance, for the last, film of the, last scene of the film, it was, it's all on the shoulder of Adele. You know, I, I, I give her different steps. She has to go through different emotions, mm -hmm. but it's a three minute long take. And, and like, no, I'm not sitting next to her. She's just basically on her shoulder. But she knows that in the end, she has to finish with an inspiration. And that's, you know, she knows where her starting point and what she has to land. And it's, it's be, being that accurate, being that um, con concrete, no, concrete is not the world. But, uh, precise. Precise, yeah. thank you. And, and then they, they can embody it as, you know, because they're not, because it's not too directive in a way, because you know it's a way to start the conversation at a very high level. Because then they can, they know they they have these steps and they can give you know the whole their whole feelings to this. Lesson four: the female gaze is an actual thing. I think there's a male gaze, and so there is a female that, gaze. By definition, yeah. But uh, I think we should be talking about the male gaze mostly because we, uh, as female, has been growing in that in that world. I've been I've been raised by. In a, heter in a heterosexual world, and so my imaginary is that there was actual. I mean, uh, <laughs> and so I know male gaze by heart. I've been defined, I've been moved by male gaze, been excited by male gaze. So 
we are in the position now we can be anything as female because as an audience as a, as, and as artists because we know both worlds we have our experiences uh, there is no female imaginary because there is not been that many there's not a corpus there's not been that many uh, f female artists so that we can say there's this female imaginary there's but women have been Im imagined by men so they're in charge of our images um, still still think? of course we can see well they're the film critics they're I mean they're they're, they're making the speech and they're they're talking about the but operas they when they are they done they they it's moving I'm French I'm living in France huh? <laughs> the, 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 the balance is not as good uh, of course it's not I had to wait for Wonder Woman to actually feel what it's like to be a superhero in a film and it actually changed my life. I felt like I was in, it was a new experience. I felt like <gasps> this excitement and I got out of the room and I was like, I can't be anything. And I'm like, oh, so that's how it feels, you know? You bring me some men and I'll just throw them No, bring me, bring me life anything. and I'll just eat it, uh, you know? So I feel this female gaze thing is, is a lot about, yeah, being hybrid, being, but being everything. And lesson five, use music intentionally. At the beginning of the process of thinking about the film, I mean, it's always a decision that I take very early in the process, whether there'll be music in the film or not, because it definitely influences the writing. Because if there's no music, then you have to find the rhythm that allows that allows it. And also you have to find the, the musically, the film has to be, you have to find the film's melody without with knowing that there won't be music. So you have to take this decision very early on because then you also in, you're not, you're not going to leave room. You're not, you know, I mean, it's really not the same. Um, and it was a matter of uh, um, reconstitution, actually. I wanted to put you in the same position as the character there. I mean, there's a frustration regarding beauty and the arts. You know, when she finds a book, it's like, okay, it's a book. I'm going to read it 20 times. Uh, and they have to, and have to, they have to go to church to listen to music, and um, um, and so I wanted you to be equals with them, and so also that so that you could feel that rush uh, and that joy when you finally uh, connect to music uh, with the character. Well, I hope you all fell in love with Celine as much as I did. My favorite piece of advice of hers was to use music intentionally. What about you guys? What was your favorite piece of advice that you took from Celine? Leave a comment below and let me know. As always, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure, and I hope this video helped you on your filmmaking journey. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.